This video will demonstrate an advantage of using an external software CW audio bandpass filter when listening to QRQ on your computer sound card. We're going to demonstrate first by FLJG sending a stream of the letter S. And we're going to look at the spectrum analyzer here and look at the noise it generates just from the edges of rapid succession of the CW element characters when you're at QRQ speeds. So if you look here, you see a lot of harmonics being noise being generated. And so let's put the filter in. And this is a Bessel filter, which I found to be very, very good for uh, Morse code. It's better than any of the other options that are listed here. This does not distort the CW in any way, it just filters it. You're able to adjust the bandwidth and the order of the filters and the center frequency. And for now I just have it set to here. So let's see what it sounds like once we have the filter in. And then I'm going to take the filter in and out. So we'll put the filter on and send the S's again. So as you can hear, without the filter, there is quite a bit of edge noise. And let's listen to a file and see how that sounds with the filter in and out. Okay, so that gives you the general idea of how that filter cleans up the edge noise from sending a file at QRQ. And this is just at 65. Now once you go above this, even doubling it, it really gets noisy. Let's take this down and start from around 25, and then I'll start taking it up. You can start here when the edge noise starts here. You can see it, but it's not that prominent as far as listening to it. Not too bad at 40. And 50 is starting to show up a little bit. Let me take the filter in. Let's keep going up. It's pretty bad at 65. And let's go beyond that now. Let's go. And 95, look at all that noise. Big difference. And there, there reaches a point as you go higher in speeds. The edge noise is almost too much. You can barely hear the CW. So, so on your way for you super QRQ guys or heading towards 150, this could make a big difference in your ability to copy at that speed. Because it's almost impossible for the rise time to have any effect on that edge noise just from being in rapid succession at that high speed. Let's see what a file sounds like again at this speed without the filter. Just in unintelligible, just nothing but racket. Now let's put the filter back in.
Okay, that kind of gives you an idea anyway. And let's take a look at a couple other programs that we use for training in QRQ and Morse code. Here's Fabian's. We'll take the filter out for listening to word sounds. And let's see what it sounds like. A little noisy, although it, you know, at 6.5 it's still not that bad, but let's put the filter back in. And now let's listen to it. So, of course, that's the word other. And then let's take the speed up. And we'll go to, let's go up to 100. And try it again. And hear all that harmonics being generated there? back in and try to get okay the word other and so forth so f even for word training that can come in handy take back down to 65 and we'll try it a few more times Take the filter off. Put the filter back on. And knowledge. Etc. etc. And I've uh, if you're making files with ebook to CW, these are the settings I'm using at the moment. I found the dash B three twenty or one ninety Two, I think, to have a better sound than some of the other ones. That seemed like it would be a major setting that really helped. So I made a file with that and we're using mix so we can use a variable speed on it. So let's see what that sounds like. And let's take the filter out first. Pretty noisy. like. Put the filter back in. So very, very noisy. And one, one nice thing about this using a mix for practice is when you hit the letter A, you can hit repeat and rewind it as you see. And there's no high pitched noise from the rewind. So that really helps mix sound better. It also helps when you make audio files from ebook to CW sound better when they're actually being played. So how do you set up pedal board and this VST engineers filter? The links to download those will be in the show notes. Once you bring up pedal board bring up the miscellaneous settings. You don't need the MIDI or the oscillator OSC input, open sound control input, so you can take those out. Sometimes it's helpful to leave these two checked, especially the save audio settings, because once you set this, you can forget it, as they say, and it'll save it, and it'll come back just like you put it the first, you know, once you get everything set the way you want it, it'll bring it back just like that. You can double click on the headers here and change the names, which I've already done. And then go back into options and audio settings. I'm using a virtual audio cable like program called Virtual, or excuse me, VB Audio Virtual Cable. And there's a bunch of these out there, so whichever one you're using, you need one of them. The show notes for the VB Audio Virtual Cable which is a free cable and he has it listed as donationware so if you like it you're free to uh, let him know by uh, a donation of 
the value that you're able to give him to help him keep developing this program. And it worked very well. I ran this solid for two days in a row using FL Digi to send audio to this cable and listen to it. And it was on a continuous loop. And in two days' time, over 48 hours, it ran perfectly. So I'm pretty impressed with the performance of this VB Audio virtual cable. So the audio comes into this cable and then inside pedal board it goes to the Bessel filter and then to whatever computer sound card you have. Mine is the real tech. Then you need to set your sample rate and mine is already set by Windows computer settings. Let's take a look at that. So I have my properties let's go to the advanced tab and you see that I already have mine set to 48,000 Hertz at 16 bits so that will be the limitations that you see in the sample rate of pedal board now the buffer sizes has a lot of options so you want the lowest that you have that where you don't get pops and cracks on your audio and for me that was 320 samples so once that's set you run a little hit the test button you should be able to hear it and you know you're in good shape and let's bring this back for a second. Then how do you get these to, to uh, set up properly? So the input and the output will already show up and then you just like I said just double click the header and then you can type in whatever you want just to identify and to keep things straight which I've already done. Then to get the VST plugin to go between these two you go to options in the plugin list. Then go to options and then go to scan for new or updated VST plugins. Once you've already downloaded the engineers filter, you click the plus button and you find out and guide this screen to where it's at, then you highlight it or the folder of it and then click OK and then click scan. And then once that's done, you just get out of there. And then all you have to do is double click somewhere in the screen here and pick that filter and it'll show up. Once you have the filter, then you draw wires to it. Left click hold and it'll snap right in there. Left click hold and it'll snap right in there. And do the same thing for the output. Left click hold and pull the wire out and attach it. I've already done that up here so I don't need to do it again. So you highlight and you hit delete to get rid of them. Highlight, left click highlight and delete. Then to bring up the engineer's filter so that you can adjust it. Oh, I see it's because I have two of them it's not going to let me get rid of that one. Okay, put that one down there for a second and bring, click this little E here and that brings up the plug-in. Now these, this is how you adjust it. So you select band pass, select bessel. You can try the other ones but I didn't care for how they sounded. The bessel gave no distortion or added anything to or taken and took anything from the way the CW should sound. Some filters will definitely do that and you can kind of listen to it yourself there. Then you set the center frequency. You can left click and move this up and back or just right click and click enter volume which I've already done. The order of the filter let me set some S's. Slow this down a little bit. So the order of the filter and the bandwidth, it's too low, too wide, too many orders. So that's pretty good right there. Depends on how much percussive effect you want. So adjust it however you want and save it. And I've saved mine as ICW. And then the next time you bring this engineer's filter up, just click on load and then 
however, whatever name you use to save it, just click on that and click open, and it'll bring it up just like you set it before. Then you just take the wires out and bring them over to your output. And that's all you have to do. Now to bypass it, you just hit this B button. It'll turn, the B will turn darker. And that's pretty much it. Pedalboard has been really a nice filter for using uh, these free VST plugins. It's been exceptional. Okay, I think that pretty much sums up everything. I hope uh, you're all able to try this. I think you'll find that adding an external software CW bandpass filter really cleans up QRQ, and especially when you start getting above 70 words per minute. Thanks for watching.